meeting at seven uh, seven at six thirty two. Okay, you're recording. Yep. All right, so I'll open up the uh, Bridgewater Finance Committee budget subcommittee at six thirty two p.m. Okay, very good. Uh, Matt, the February 2nd minutes from last week, I don't have those quite completed yet. So we're going to have to just look over that, pass over that till next week. All right. Motion to adjourn then. <laughs> <laughs> so legislation referred. We have one order that was referred to us at the um, council meeting, the acceptance of non-recurring revenue order FY21030. Yeah, That's the um, the payment received by the Department of Corre Correction for two hundred ninety two thousand. It's not really part of the budget. It's revenue that we don't factor in because you never know if it's going to be non recurring. <laughs> so let's hope it is. Hope it is. So there's motion by uh, Matt, second by me, Dennis. Um, any discussion? Not Matt. Matt. Yes. Yes, Dennis, yes. Motion passes two to nothing. Next item on the agenda is um, the FY22 budget resolution. Since we have, do you, does the finance committee have any have any business they want to get out? This, does, oh, that's right, you're a subcommittee. You're not the- Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, we'll, so we'll see these items, yeah, at a, a full meeting on the 16th. All right. So we can go into the budget resolution and then have a discussion about the budget. And then there was one other item I put on about this billing of school, uh, the billing practice for the school district. We'll, we'll talk the budget and finance. We'll talk about that afterwards. So we'll go to the budget resolution, which is R21003, which was sponsored uh, back in. Um, November by Councilor Wood, and I know the fine the budget the finance committee's budget subcommittee has been working um, on revising it, making some recommendations. So I'll turn it over. I believe that Tony has has some has a draft of it or whatever he wants to present tonight. So well. Um, we had a document that unfortunately wasn't issued to you till later, uh, I apologize, Mr. Gallagher. Um, the budget and finance subcommittee got a copy of it as well. So some of the things that have come up to the discussion we've uh, worked into this. I've sat down with the town manager and we were going to give it back to both groups to begin to you know, dissect it a little bit, make sure to cap capture some of the things that they wanted to see um, answer questions and um, and then make any modifications as as you you guys see fit. Okay, so did we will we get a cop? Will the budget and finance committee get a copy of that or did it, it just was it was sent you? It just was sent you late later today. I think okay. it you got it in your mailbox. I apologize. Oh, okay. That's that was I was curious about. Uh, so. Tony, you drafted that? So what, the way the process worked, I met with Nate and his group and we got some feedback and then we met, uh, the finance committee met and I got some additional feedback. Um, and Michael and I took it back to Michael and Michael and I both had gotten some feedback. Um, at certain council me meetings, there was references, references to, I think, uh, issues of maintenance of buildings, issue of you know rate maintenance and repairs of roadways, things of that nature. Uh, so we incorporated what we were hearing into the document and, and now it's in a draft form that Michael and I looked at and we wanted to bring it back to you and to the finance committee to take a look, look see. Okay, yeah, it looks good. I, I, I love the document myself personally. The exhibits are those to be drafted. Yes. Yes. Okay. Hey, Tony, this is Nathan. Uh, real quick, like you said, we did get a kind of last minute. Could you maybe just highlight some of the changes sure. that you were speaking of to us? Yeah, 
I'd, I'd be I'd be glad to. Do you want me to sh share the document on the screen, or do you just want to read from what you have? How would you like? John, did you receive? I received the. Yeah, I did receive the. I'm just pulling it up on my iPhone now. So, uh, Matt, you have a you have seen it. You've read through it briefly. Yeah. And it's, I don't know if Sean has or not, but then I can just point to the on. Uh, I just I just got it. Yeah. Okay. So, Tony, so how, I would how suggest would, if you go over it, just go over some of the highlights, Tony. I will. And we can continue this discussion if that's okay for our next week's meeting because we're meeting again on the 16th. That'd be fantastic. And bring back any ideas yep. that we have. So, all right, go ahead, Tony. So, yep, on, on, uh, under the sound finan financial con uh, condition, stability is defined as we added capital solvency to highlight some of the um, what we think of the concerns that we've heard that we have to make sure we assess all of our assets, maintain them, and come up with a replacement uh, uh, plan for those. So it's we yeah. want to keep that forefront uh, in our mind. Uh, so that was highlighted there. Hey, Tony, sorry to interrupt. Um, who, who did the email come from? Because I, I don't remember seeing it, but that doesn't mean I didn't. Josh. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. So that was that was the only change uh, there. All those other items that were on that uh, first first page um, are from uh, last year. Um, under financial policies and guidelines, um, I think where some additional information was uh, put in there. Uh, is under 2A, um, again, um, the unreserved fund balance or free cash for 22 uh, will be targeted at 1.75% of the 21 operating budget and used only for one-time expenditures as capital, capital equipment, unexpected or un extraordinary expenses such as unbudgeted snow and ice removal expenses or to meet the stabilization uh, policy objectives. So the 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 um, example I would use is that's approximately $1 million. Um, and if we were to share a portion of that capital surplus, uh, that surplus to our capital fund uh, to meet our ongoing capital requirements and share a portion of that with the school to meet their capital requirements, meet our OPEB uh, commitment that we've made over the last few years of $100,000 and to meet any uh, sick leave buyback liabilities, uh, we would eat that million, uh, million one, I guess it, it works out to be 1.75 uh, up very quickly. So the town manager and I talked about this. We wanna specify how that would uh, be allocated in those areas and target that 1.75%. Uh, Is that where we are for this fiscal year? One point. What's what's the current percent now? Okay, uh, it was it was adjusted last resolution to one point five. May have to do that again. <laughs> um. Yeah. Hey, Tony, yes. Tony, I'm, I'm sorry. Just uh, maybe since Eric doesn't have it, maybe you can share your screen so he can read along. Maybe if anybody else doesn't have it. Nate, Nate, I have it now. Oh, you I, do? Sorry. Okay. All right, hey, great. I, I was, I thought it came from Ann. So I was looking for an email from Ann, but no, I have it. Okay. okay. So I was oh. just referring to this paragraph um, here. I already covered it. Yep. I, won't, I won't cover it again. Um, we got into more specifics uh, under um, expenditures B. Um, we started to really point out, um, and we want to point out with the exhibits uh, that you will get, is two exhibits. One exhibit that's going to show how we're going to, would plan on allocating that 1.75%. And also, um, we would have reference to how are we funding certain portions of these capital items. So for the last four or five years, all these capital items for machinery, equipment, and vehicles, software, and some building improvements, they've all been funded by our capital 
stabilization fund. So without us funding, having reserves at the end of the year, uh, adequate enough to maintain our capital assets, as I just described, um, we'd have to find another funding mechanism in order to stay up with the number of police vehicles we need, um, uh, the equipment and updates to some of our technology that will, will occur um, as, a, as a couple of examples. Plus we have done some repairs uh, to HVAC units, which have been the 50, 60, $70,000 range. You'll, you guys have that capital um, report I did to council about four or five weeks ago. And you can see from that how we funded uh, a, the major portion of, of the capital plan. And that is with um, our reserves. So you can see how number uh, 3D and 4B are tightly connected. You're saying the 1.75 percent is about a, a million dollars of million the, and one. Yep. 1.1 million dollars of the fiscal 22 operating budget. Correct. So let's back up another past fiscal year. Mm -hmm. What was our what was our, what was our um, target? Certi 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 no. What was our actual certified free cash? at the close of the last fiscal year, it was well over a million dollars. Oh, yes. Oh, so the so free the, cash for FY20 was $2.2 .2 million. Right. So, I mean, I understand that number and it, 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 it ties your hands when it comes to the revenue portion of it, which is why mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't see the need that it needs to go back to 1.75. I think it could stay at one and a half and you'd probably still meet, still meet the way over the million dollars in, in available well, in, in certified free cash. We know there's a lot of uncertainty out there. I know we've been saying this for six or seven years and a few of those years I didn't agree with it, but now I do because I think we're, we're, we're heading into that because we don't, we under, we're very grateful that the state budget is gonna give us um, additional monies in, in local aid. And I don't quite know how the schools fared out. Um, but that's the number I'm, I'm focused on. Sure. But one of the things that I, I think we're going to see this year is the snow and ice deficit is certainly going to be in a big number this year compared mm -hmm. to the last couple of years. Yep. We need to pay those bills. Yep. So um, that's why it's out there last year it was out there at 1.75. The, the both finance committee, I think, in, in, in your committee, uh, Mr. Gallagher uh, wanted it at 1.5, and I think that's where it ended up. Okay. So how, Tony, did it get back to 1.75? Was that between you and Mr. Dutton? No, it, 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 this is a proposal. It's, it's every year we have to adjust it back to? Well, it's a proposal. It, okay. Gallagher. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, one thing that's going to help us, um, we will have our full capital improvement program and a uh, targeted uh, list of capital items that we'll be looking for, either funding from what we have available on our capital stabilization fund now, or from our free cash that gets certified at the end of FY21. So um, we're really trying to get these documents tight so that they're in the proper sequencing. So you can be informed as to what exactly we would be doing, whether it's a million dollars, whether it's $800,000, whether it's $2 million, what capital would be funded uh, by uh, the surplus, okay? And then I think those are the main main items. Um, and then the town manager pointed to his budget objectives right there down below. Hey, Tony, just, just a quick question before we move on. And I, I, I know we, we spent a lot of time as a team talking about new equipment um, aged equipment and really old equipment. But the one thing we don't talk about a lot is, as a finance committee and, you know, um, a subcommittee is, is what we can do with our existing fleet to prolong the asset lives, right? So I, you know, I, I continually hear we, you know, we got to buy another 18 wheeler or a 10 wheeler or whatever it is. 
Um, and, and I'm not trying to go off topic here, but since we're talking about it, mm-hmm. it is a is a budget resolution. I think it makes sense a little bit to just kind of talk about some of the maintenance either we have or haven't budgeted for in the past that it will help us with some of these things because you know I always feel like it's kind of last minute and our backs up are up against the wall and we need to buy x y or z you know whether it's you know well, two new ambulances or yeah. two cruisers or whatever it may be um there's not a lot of talk about like mm-hmm. how do we how do we put a number in the budget that helps us move along through the years and, and, and prolong the asset life? So I, I apologize if we go off topic for No, I, I think maybe that's not captured in here um, well enough because what we're going to have in this, this capital plan, which also is going to feed your operating budget, is we're going to have a fleet schedule of all of our equipment and vehicles what their, the age of those vehicles are and what sort of replacement schedule they would be on. I think over the last five years, what we've done is taken vehicles that were in the highway department. And quite frankly, if you and I went to a, um, a, a local dealer to have our um, sticker put on there so I could get on the road with those vehicles, uh, they wouldn't have got on the road. Yep. Okay. So we're, we're, we're just coming out of that. So to your point, absolutely. There should be an, a good uh, fleet schedule. We should look at the, the life of these uh, uh, investments. We're talking, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in some cases. Um, and what is the maintenance program uh, that we have for maintaining those vehicles? I, I would suspect that once you see what that schedule looks like. You're going to feel pretty comfortable with the vehicles themselves. Um, at the same time, when we're talking about maintenance, what's our maintenance for our buildings? Well, I'm, our facilities director right now is putting together an entire program, uh, at least capturing all of our assets, uh, inventorying our assets, visiting the buildings, um, and we're starting to look at what that's going to look like. The town manager in his initial budget, uh, preliminary budget, asked for $350,000 to be put into his building maintenance line uh, so that he can start to address some of the ongoing maintenance issues once we get a full building maintenance plan. So I think we're in that phase right now. And if you'd like this document to speak a little bit more to that, making sure we have maintenance programs for our vehicles so that we can extend their useful life, our vehicles and equipment, and also our buildings so that we can extend the useful life of, let's say, doors, windows, or what have you, or, or our mechanicals, um, I, I think we'd be happy to help by, by putting that in there for you. Yeah, no, that, that, that'd be perfect. And again, I just, um, I'd probably speak to my, my background a little bit more than, than some other things, but, you know, Buying new equipment's a lot more expensive than mm-hmm. buying state auction two-year-old equipment mm-hmm. and, and having mm-hmm. a very mm-hmm. skilled mechanic on on staff to take care of that. So I just um, you know in the past we haven't talked a lot about it and and I know we've come a long way. So I just uh, I just want to keep it top of mind. Good, I, I, pre- I appreciate that, and uh, I I I'll talk to uh, the town manager just so we can wordsmith it and get it back to you guys so that you can incorporate that or not incorporate that in, into this document. Thanks, Tony. Any other questions um, for Tony regarding the budget resolution proposal? No. Um, Don't at this time. I guess what we'll do, um, I'll speak to my two members, is that we'll take a look at it over the next next few days, next week till uh, until the 16th. Mm-hmm. So we have another joint meeting on the 16th. If I could just ask um, Councilor George and Councilor Rushton to look at it and come back on the 16th with suggestions, and we'll take a vote um, to uh, approve it, recommend it. Then it goes back to I think it goes back to the council too goes back to the full council for adoption once it comes out. Once it comes out. 
Yeah, on the, on the 23rd, I believe, Dennis. Oh, is it the 23rd? We don't meet next week? Oh. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> All right, the 23rd is our next meeting. It'll have to be 6 o'clock because we have a council meeting at 7. Well, or, no, I think on the budget calendar, I, I think that Tony has the town council passing the resolution on the 23rd. It's having it submitted. I, that's something I wanted to bring up and give okay. to you guys today, uh, Dennis. Um, my technical difficulties are stopping me from doing that. I'm going to email you a tentative calendar so we can be on be in sync with one another. Is it possible for you guys to meet in a joint meeting again with the uh, finance committee just to uh, hash out any changes you want to make? Or Well, we're going to do that on the 16th, I believe, Tony. Well, I think that's what Dennis was speaking to, right? We, we do have, we, yeah, it is in the schedule for a meeting on a joint meeting on the 16th yep. where we could Hash it out, vote on it, and yep. then it goes to the council for the following week, Tuesday. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, we're on the same page. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's where I was too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll move on to budget 20 FY22 discussion, uh, discussion items. Um, last uh, week, uh, Tony, I know you weren't you weren't here, but I'm sure you're aware the town manager presented his preliminary budget to to us. Um, actually, the night before the council meeting, we got it. So, the the, the finance committee subcommittee has it. Um, the council has it, and obviously the fi budget and finance committee has it. Um, so. Revenue projections, the revenue projections are, you know, pretty, pretty tight. I, I just have a question regarding the snow and ice removal. It, it, it appears based on what the town manager presented mm -hmm. is that at that point, and I know it's gone up, at that point he was projecting a half a million dollars deficit in the snow and ice, um, snow and ice budget. Yep, that was projected. So it's, it could still be under that, or it could be over that. Now I don't know, but but um, it's, we know it's going to go over that. It, it, why wouldn't we use stabilization funds to pay that debt off? Why would we want to use um, the revenue, the projected revenue in the budget to do that? Well, we have as a as a practice. Uh, planned on and have used um, part of our uh, revenue stream each year to fund the allowable deficit because snow and ice is the only allowable deficit. We haven't gone into the stabilization to do so. Um, there's been discussion as to whether or not that's something we should be planning for in another way. Um, it's just what we've done as a practice. If we were to change that, that would make monies available, but that would then change our entire practice. We'd have to say every year that there's a snow and ice deficit, we're going to go to the stabilization fund to fund it. Well, it could be on a case by case basis. I mean, some some years, as well, you know, back in 2015, yeah, the, the state allowed us to pay yeah. that debt over three budget cycles. So I can, I can give I can give you my thought process on it. So I I have what I've tried to bring to all of this is a very disciplined, consistent approach. I I don't know that this year, based on what I'm seeing, would want would warrant us to change our practice. Um, I feel the first revenue numbers that were provided, uh, as they should have been, are conservative. Um, I believe there's some room that we're going to see. Um, if we had a eight hundred thousand dollar snow and ice deficit, I would say then that would be above the average. Our average is between four and five hundred thousand, except for like you said, 2015. Then I would be recommending because it's an exception outside of the rule or the average that we look to uh, fund that through a one-time uh, funding source. But as a rule, this is how the revenue stream has, has, has flowed. And to begin to use, make adjustments can sometimes cause confusion and or uh, lack of clarity around what's the criteria to determine 
whether you go to the stabilization fund for the snow and ice deficit or you don't. Again, my belief is if we have one of those banner years and we spent a million dollars, that's a time to, to look at it. But if it's at the time that uh, we checked the deficit, we were about $120,000 in deficit. Now we've had two snowstorms since then. A snowstorm is typically, typically, and this is based on Ron's estimates he's given me, is between thirty-five and forty thousand dollars a snowstorm. Okay, um, so I would still uh, uh, recommend to the town manager that we follow the practice that we have, unless there's something unforeseen that that occurs in snow and ice, like we saw in two thousand fifteen. I just think we need. I mean, we need to have that discussion. I, I think because it would be a shame that we, if if we budgeted. A deficit of five hundred thousand, and it was only three hundred thousand. Well, oh, we're going to make an adjustment. We'll make an adjustment yeah, because, if, budget. Would, because it would free up some monies that we could apply towards other programs that are desperately needed. So, um, I, I personally, and you know, I, if it was only at one hundred twenty-five thousand, and we had two storms since, and it's probably at two hundred now. 250 now. I mean, I'm not going to project that, but we'll we'll get more. We know that. I just think that's a that's a certainly a, a justifiable use of the stabilization fund to pay off that debt. I do. Okay. Any other questions regarding the preliminary budget? I'm trying to find my notes. Here we go. On the um, motor vehicle excise, just out of curiosity, um, last year I got my bill in February. Mm -hmm. This year I got it in like January 10th. When you talk about commitments, are, are commitments set certain periods of the year you send out commitments or, I mean, that's like, I mean, I got mine like a month earlier. That's because the registry has changed their uh, billing practices. So you, so you send, they're, yeah. they're, they're getting the information to us much sooner. Is this the biggest commitment, the, 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 the one that just went out? Yeah, $2.8 million. It's down four, this commitment's down 4% from last year's commitment. I'm done with questions. <laughs> Uh, Tony, quick question, just piggybacking off uh, Mr. Gallagher's point. Mm -hmm. The stabilization fund and the, and the snow, uh, do we have three years every year to repay it, or is it just in bad years if the state gives us uh, the ability to repay it in three years? Is it, is, is, is it a it's special? The, it's the latter. It's what you just described. Thank you. And even so, and sometimes if we have a really, really, really bad storm, we declare a state of emergency. Sometimes there's federal, not federal, sometimes state money comes in. Sometimes, but I don't expect that. We still got to pay for it and it just comes in later on, but. Thank you. Tony, just to clarify real quick, you said that the motor vehicle excise is down 4%, correct? The commitment, the large commitment is down 4% from last year. Okay. Thank you. And how many commitments go out every year? Well, now that we're doing it um, uh, almost every month, uh, and then they have a small commitment, they clean it up. You're talking seven. Every other month, I'm sorry. The big commitment is the one that would have just gone out. And, and that's the one that's down 4%. The other ones, do you don't, know, are they all down 4% or just the big one? I was just, I was just keying on the large one because again, this is, on, this is only the second year they've gone to every month commitments. So uh, I'm, I'm doing the analytical work now. So one thing I can promise is before the final revenue numbers are done, which our goal is to have that ready by, um, well, at least our second pass, which should be a solid pass, 
uh, 3-1. So I will be willing to go through all of my estimating methodologies and show some his, his, history over the last few years of motor vehicle excise permits, new growth and so forth. So uh, both bodies can be um, uh, on the same page with at least the methodologies that, that, that I've been uh, incorporated. I mean, the new growth was encouraging. I mean, that, that's a pretty big number. Yes. Um, and um, I know based on what was, based on the preliminary proposal, it was still 800, 800 grand out of whack, so. Mm -hmm. And that did have the town manager's uh, priorities, which um, he's been asked to uh, present, especially Tony, around building Tony, maintenance. Tony, just uh, again, quick question, and I think it piggybacks off Dennis's point. Um, and I, I don't know how you get to this, so I apologize. But as we look at the budget as a whole, right, there, mm -hmm. there are obvious COVID impacts. There's going to be some COVID impacts to our taxes on food and beverage. There's going to be some taxes on, and I think you would say that new, new car sales, excise tax is probably down because of, of, uh, of COVID. I would expect that new home sales are up a little bit. Is, is there an exercise that's been run to kind of give us just an idea of here's your pluses and here's your minuses as, as we walk into this budget season? Because I, I think we did a really good la job last year when we sat down at the final budget, as tough as it was to kind of say, here's where we think state aid is going to be. And we were pretty close. And, and so I'm just, I'm just curious to see if and when you think you'll have a read on that. So the, the December reports that were produced showed you some comparisons uh, regarding the percent that we're collecting um, on some of our major billings, motor vehicle um, excise tax. Um, you also saw our collections on our real estate and personal property taxes. And it also showed a comparison, what I call the major core drivers of our local receipts, which are motor vehicle excise tasks, your meals, your room tax, your uh, penalties and interest on taxes, your licenses and permits. Um, and, and if you look at those, I think bottom line is the economy as it relates to the impact on meals tax and room tax uh, meal tax, particularly, we didn't see the reduction that we, we, we thought we might. So we're seeing a surplus above our budget for FY21 already. Uh, motor vehicle excise tax, we were very conservative because we had no idea what was going to happen. And although we're down 4% in our commitment, we're over budget in our collections. So that's a good sign. Um, on the, in the area of penalties and interest on taxes, they, they happen to be up. And the reason they're up is our receivable balances and our uncollectible are, are actually rising a little bit. Um, we envision putting into tax title uh, from FY20 uh, taxes, uh, our last check was around 700,000. The year before we only put about a quarter of a million. So we are seeing some slow pay. The billings are there, but the slow pay and people's ability to pay will impact our undesignated fund balance at the end of the year. Um, so those are some key highlights. So when I do sit with you um, before the 3-1, I can have a session where I actually walk through all of the estimates that we have, walk through the results of the first quarter and also what we see uh, trending in those key areas for January and February. I think I think you'll you'll get an idea of why the numbers are what they are. The governor's number, uh, the fact that he came right out with a number that that is funding us uh, with an increase over FY twenty one um, is encouraging um, because we can use that and and that actually helped. Um, with the first preliminary numbers that the town manager put out. But I really would like to hold that to, to, a, to a, the exact exercise that you're talking about. Let's, let's really go through these key numbers. You guys uh, can see the historical trends. Matter of fact, we did some work over the last couple of weeks. 
I have historical trend numbers in all these areas since FY11. I have some historical trend numbers for the school and what they got for chapter 70 since 2011. So I really like to, to give the context again, and then where do we see uh, the economy going over the next six to nine months? Um, I think it's gonna be those who are suffering will have a tad time paying. Uh, those uh, you, new car sales are slightly down, but not as much as we had uh, anticipated. No, f fair enough. And, and, and I think, I do think it's very important as we get into budget season though, to have exactly what you just talked about, right? Is mm -hmm. a lot of our budget is based on exactly what we know we're gonna collect. And I mm -hmm. think we've, we've kind of shrunken the uncertainties in the past. And I, I, I wanna make sure that we're, we're very clear on, on what those uncertainties are um, so that we can, we can forecast that going forward. So appreciate it, thank you. It, and I might even bring uh, uh, our assessor in. She's done, and her staff has done some yeoman's work. The reason we have a new growth figure in our preliminary budget of 800,000 is because we had some estimates done by the end of October this year. And that has to do with how we've ramped up collecting our data so that we can in fact do a, a better uh, est estimating, even with our 2-1 budget. We know by, uh, we really feel that by the end of this month, I, was, I spoke with her, she feels we would, what we normally called our 415 free uh, new growth number, uh, we're, we think we're gonna have that available 3-1 this year. Thank you, Tony. Hey, Tony. Yeah. Um, Looking yes, at the medical benefit, the 4.1, is that contractual or is that is that just an anticipated increase that you see? Is that the contractual amount or is that the total amount, I should say? No, the, the 4.1 uh, is, is a combination of contractual. I think that's the salaries and benefits and um, uh, number. Or is that just benefits? I don't have the doc in front of me, uh, Mr. George. Yeah, it's it, it's the medical. You, you've got it. You've got medical life, workers comp, all that. Yeah. Yes. At six point seven, yeah. which I know some of it. You know, like workers comp, we got to pay. Yeah. Um, so medical that, benefit at yep. four point one. I'm just curious. Is that is that net contractual or is that just something that you see as a total increase? That's the increase we'd be estimating. Last year we estimated around seven. It came in at two two plus, like two and a half percent. So we pulled the number down this year because I've been looking at the claims reports coming from the county and we're really doing very well with our claims reports. So what that means is they could see a, a, a they're seeing right now more surplus this year as compared to last year. And what they'll do is each year they'll use some of their surplus to offset the rate increases. Um, so that's why I've moved that number, number down to like 4.1%. Okay, thank you. Tony, I have a quick question for you. Um, we touched on the schools, and I happened to watch uh, Governor Baker uh, give his press conference mm -hmm. uh, on the budget proposal, and he brought up uh, the Student Opportunity Act, which I honestly don't know a whole bunch about, but he made the comment that the first year of the Student Opportunity Act will be fully funded, and then he said after that, it will be phased in over seven years. Do you okay. think, I, I don't know how much you know about it, I'm sure we can expand on this in another format, but uh, do we, you know, would there be future exposure to us? Um, you know, I, they don't fully fund it in years two, three, four, five, six. Well, here's here's the thing. Um, their chapter 70 number for this year, give, even the governors, the increase isn't, uh, I wish I could, again, technology, I apologize. I can't pull up my work computer right now. Um, I believe it was less than 2% was the increase to revenue to our regional school district. 2.5, I thought I heard, but. Yeah, if you look at all the different buckets, um, the chapter 70, I don't know that it was 2.5, but let's say, let's say it was 2.5. That's certainly below the 3.72 that they mentioned at the, uh, um, the meeting we had back in January. Um, so you can see right away, there's an eroding of of the revenue coming from the state against what they need. Um, at, 
as it relates to that particular piece, um, now that there's been a statement that something's happening there, now we'll investigate what that something really is. Um, and uh, we'll have to reach out to the, uh, the schools to make sure we uh, get a handle on how that is gonna impact the FY22 uh, budget. I am not sure at this time. Thank you. Yeah, I know that he did mention too that a lot of the additional uh, state chapter 70 money will be focused on underperforming school districts too. Sometimes it hurts to be doing well. <laughs> right, it's a good thing. Okay, thank you, Tony. You're welcome. Any other questions regarding the FY22 budget? So we will, um, the Budget and Finance Committee has one other item on our agenda. I don't know if um, you guys want to adjourn or whatnot, but we'll we'll have we'll we'll continue the joint meeting uh, on June on uh, February sixteenth. Stick around. This is a good one. This is a good one. <laughs> so, I don't know what this one is. <laughs> this is uh, Tony under D. Two bullet. The second bullet point is the is billing practices for the school district on town old buildings. This question came up over a year ago, um, well over a year ago, because Bill Wood was um, chairman of the Budget and Finance Committee when this was, when this was brought up. And there was a concern addressed, um, concern brought up at that time regarding practice for billing the district, school district, for work that is conducted on town owned buildings, i.e. Uh, backflow testing, for example. Mm -hmm. Bill, uh, uh, this was question was raised in the past, about a mm -hmm. little over, well over a year ago, and there doesn't seem to be an answer to why the district. Yeah, uh, the district I, built, but not so much that they shouldn't be. But it, the question really was: Is this practice carried through other departments? When services like that are performed for them, that was the that was the question posed over a year ago, and I guess it hasn't been answered. Well, I if if we if we got something in writing, I'm I'm not from familiar. I do remember the discussion, um, and I thought that while the uh, con, uh, the agreement, the regional agreement was being reworked, that that would have been addressed through the regional agreement discussions. Um, I do yeah. remember putting out the question. I, I wondered what Rainham's practice was, and maybe we could get get together and figure out whether there's a fair and consistent methodology um, in 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 doing that. Um, it's really I haven't been in the the negotiations uh, for the regional agreement. So 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 Tony, I don't mean to interrupt, but I have been. There's the the agreement itself does not go into that type of detail mm -hmm. um it is much more forgive the term of a grander scale mm -hmm. like for instance the assessment formula refers to the act of 1993 oh it, and it doesn't go any farther than that and okay. you know there's there's also talk about just allocation of expenses yeah and, and but you're you're not going to see at least in this draft that anyone's going to go narrow and deep in regards to, you know, what those allocation of expenses are, how they're calculated, how they're billed. It's, I think it's more around the practice of doing it than it is in a regional agreement. And it's a good question how random does it too. I have no clue, Yeah. but I, I think, and you probably with a lot of other people, the agreement itself is not that detailed per se. No. no. Okay. Um, so then what you're suggesting then if you're part of that group is anything like that would just be the, uh, the a practice that the in good faith the regional school district in the town would would sit down and and, and try to work out is that right right I mean it, it, it's a question from the chairman of the school committee and he's and he's just asking it again and Tony it wasn't it wasn't given to us is that we fell down. It was asked a year ago, having gotten, oh, you know, okay. any clarity. Oh, sure, so, sure. So now he's asking again, you know, can we, can he just get a, a better explanation or maybe revisiting, um, looking at that just to, you know, make sure, 
it, it, it's a I good will. practice, or, you know, things of yeah. that nature. Okay, we will, uh, we will, I will certainly make sure it gets moved along and an answer is given. Okay, I'll keep this on the agenda. Fantastic. So for future. <laughs> That's great. For future meetings, so we don't forget about it. Sounds like uh, a plan. Anything else on that issue? Um, any public comment? Is there anyone here from the public that wishes to comment on this meeting? I don't see any hands. Okay. We will meet again on February 16th at 6.30, right? 6.30? Did we walk at six? We're gonna do six thirty. Yeah, I thought we had a council meeting. Okay. We don't. This is our, this is our three week break. <laughs> okay. So we don't meet till the twenty third. Yeah, I, so I think it's six, is six thirty better or six? I don't. I, don't, I know six thirty is something the finance committee's been used to. Yes. So. Traditionally, we do meet. We have been meeting at six thirty. Sure. Um, I did give him a heads up today that we might meet at six next Tuesday. But if we go back to six thirty, it'll be fine. I'm sure. Keep it. At, we'll do it at six thirty. Okay. Next week, okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the budget and the finance committee. So moved. Second. Moved by Sean, seconded by Matt. Any discussion? Sean? Yes. Matt? Yes. Dennis, yes. We are adjourned three to zero. Oh. See you in a week. I'll uh, entertain a motion from the bud uh, finance committee budget subcommittee to adjourn. Okay, so we'll uh, first. I got Eric second. I'll do a roll call real quick. Uh, Julie? Aye. Eric? Aye. Susie? Aye. And I vote aye. All right, I'll see everybody on the 16th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.